I'm Allison for Leading Edge Dog Show Academy, and today we are going to talk about line brushing. And I know we have other line brushing tutorials, but um, this is an important one because there's many people out there that either aren't getting it right or aren't understanding how to do it on shorter coat, okay? So first of all, this is not line brushing, okay? Like, the, I don't even know really what to call it, but it's not line brushing. So line brushing is when we take a section of hair and we do it line by line, right? So it is even more important in some of those breeds that have shorter coat, right? So even though this is a poodle, we're gonna show it here first and then on this really short coat. If you had a Smooth Collie, a Beaucheron, a Skipper Key, a Siberian Husky, um, a Smooth Collie, any of those breeds, an Alaskan Malamute, you still need to properly line comb that hair to get that really full bodied look, right? So first of all, I'm gonna show you on this longer hair because it's a little bit easier on like how you do it. First of all, you have to have a starting point. I don't really like to start right in the middle. I mean, you could, but it just kind of makes things more difficult. So, you know, if you can start at the bottom of a leg, the front of a face, whatever it might look at, have a starting point. So then you want each section of hair to be about a finger's width apart. So obviously if you have a, like a toy dog, you'd be using a smaller finger, right? So about a finger's width. So especially when you're first learning how to do it, I like to have like some kind of parting comb. It can be a knitting needle. It can be a proper rat tail comb like this. Um, and then I'm gonna make that part like from, you know, the size of the section that I want from side to side, right? So the word line comes from like this line that we have created to brush the dog, right? So we never brush dry hair. We're gonna get a little spritz of something. And then I'm going to brush it carefully with my slicker brush in this case. Doesn't matter what brush you use, you just have to use a brush. Then you're going to go from the root to the end with your comb. I like to do it with a the wide end of my comb and then the narrow end of my comb, right? So that would be one line. And then my next line would be again, that one finger width. And I'm gonna go from side to side like this, pull up this new bundle of hair. I'm gonna flip it down onto the already brushed part of the hair, right? So you can see this isn't brushed, that is. Again, lightly missed it with some kind of brushing spray. I'm gonna take my brush and I'm gonna go from the root, right? Which is the line of the line brushing. And I'm holding the other hair out of my way. I would do that, like I'm not doing it just for the camera, especially when I'm first learning. So from that line or the root out to the end, gently, making sure I can go all the way through it. Then again with my comb, right? Wide end of the comb, narrow end of the comb. There you go. So now I have two lines brushed, all right? So that's the technique we're gonna use, but now I'm gonna show you how important it is to do on this shorter hair and that we would do the same thing. So again, remember, it could be a chow chow, it could be your collie, it could be your smooth collie, I mean. It could be your Australian cattle dog, your Siberian husky. Whatever kind of dog that you have that has that coat, you need to stand out and away from the body. The way to make it look the plushest, the best is with line combing, right? So again, we're not doing this, right? This is not line brushing. But so look at, you know, a lot of people do this and wonder why their dog doesn't look like it has body. So again, I'm gonna start at a starting point, right? So for me, I'm thinking of how I want all the coat to go. I kind of want it all to be standing up and it wants to lay back uh, maybe towards the tail. So I'm gonna pick a point like at the front of the shoulder. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to part the hair so I have my first line, right? So I just have to start somewhere. There's my first line. See how short this hair is? It's still important that this is brushed properly, line brushed, right? So there's my line that I've created, slicker brush, and I'm going from that line all the way out to the end of the coat. See, it doesn't take very long, especially once you have practice. Then wide end of the comb, narrow end of the comb. Then my next line is gonna be about a finger width. So I'm, again, I'm gonna part it, right? I'm flipping this hair onto the already brushed hair, holding this other hair out of the way with my hand. See that nice straight line? Kind of a fluke. 
but that's what we're kind of aiming for. A little spritz of the spray and then all the way through that entire line with my brush, following up, wide end of the comb, narrow end of the comb, right? And then see, you're gonna start to be able to go quicker just because practice, right? But see how hard this hair is to get through because it's not properly brushed. There's my line, right? There's my line, unbrushed hair, brushed hair, brushing spray. Then I am going to go all the way through it. And then with the wide end of my comb and the narrow end of the comb. So the last thing that I want to show you is that say I had a dog that had really thin coat. She has a very thick woolly coat, but I had maybe a dog that has blown its coat. Maybe it's a smooth collie, one of those an Alaskan Malamute, a Siberian, a Skipper Key, one of those double coated breeds. And this coat is quite thin. This technique also works to build that body. So how do you do it? Same way, creating that line about a finger width apart. Obviously the less hair they have, the thinner those sections are going to be. But now before I start combing this, I'm going to try to get my brushing spray, which would be a bodifying spray if I'm trying to build body. And I'm going to spray it more at the root like that. that. Because spraying it at the root builds that body up. That's what's going to get me a better top line, a more plush look, right? But same technique. I still need to make sure that it's all upright from the root, right? Brush, wide end of the comb narrow end of the comb, right? So that's what I would do to build body. And then you can see, look at this section of the hair, right? That's like four little sections compared to this, right? Even if you told me that you brushed this part, look at what those two sections look like. Then I can't get my comb through this section, but I can get my comb through this section. So not only does this section look more plush and have more body than this section, this section is going to stay looking better because it is groomed, right? God knows what that's gonna look like. Also think about if you're scissoring this coat, right? So many of you are wondering why your scissoring techniques aren't as, as pretty as someone else's or as plush, but I'm starting with my brushing, starting like that, looking like this, and you're starting with it looking like this. This is why my scissoring is gonna look better. So remember, that line brushing isn't just for scissored coat type, right? Line brushing is really important for drop coats, for obviously, because we don't want them tangled, but for those double coated breeds, and especially those shorter double coated breeds, the kind of smoother, slicker double coated breeds, especially when they're out of coat, nothing is going to make them look more like they are in coat than proper line brushing and using the proper product. So the next time you're thinking about line brushing, no matter what the coat type, I hope today's tutorial helped you out. Hey everyone, thanks for watching today's video. Please leave us a comment below, let us know what you thought, and as well, if you have any ideas for future content that you'd like to see, you can put them down there as well. You can head over to leadingedgedogshowacademy.com where you can find our free, premium, and subscription content, and we'd love to have you join us there. As well, don't forget to like and subscribe and turn on those notifications. That way you never miss another free video tutorial. That's it for today. Thanks for watching.